My name is Doug Botter, and I am the director of Indiana University's LGBTQ Plus Culture Center. I am gay, and I didn't sort of come to that point until a little later in my life. I was in my 30s and already married. It, it occurred to me that this was an issue that I not only felt some passion about in terms of uh, civil rights and, and justice, but that it was an issue I could speak to and do something about. We try and create a real sense of openness here. Um, we're here to serve students, but we're also here to learn from students. All of us um, benefit from collective wisdom, and I think that's, that's my approach to uh, you know, directing the office. When the office opened in 94, it, college was the place to come out because you were removed from your home community, from your parents, you could experiment a little and, you know, um, uh, open yourself to new, new um, ways of thinking and, and um, experiencing life. And so in the 90s, it, this was a safe place to come out. Now people are coming to college wanting to be sure this is a safe place. And, and I would say there's much less of the uh, personal support that we offer to students who maybe are struggling with coming out and much more um, support for advocacy issues. Bloomington is considered the fifth gayest city in the nation. And that's based on 2010 census uh, statistics where many people for the first time were able to identify the same gendered relationships they lived in. So numerically, there are a lot of queer people who live in Bloomington. The history of Bloomington um, it, it is impacted by the presence of the Kinsey Institute, which goes back to the 1930s, and Alfred Kinsey was this biologist who, um, who was interested in studying sexual diversity and homosexuality in particular. And so for decades, there's been an awareness that sexuality is more fluid than we often suggest that it is. We've had um, anti-gay speakers on campus, um, you know, who do not represent the majority, and often students will um, organize peacefully in ways to respond. We might give some guidance as to how to do that. There, is a, there are some hate preachers who come on campus periodically and tell everybody they're going to hell, whoever they are, and gay people are among them, and they're sort of a joke, but but they're really upsetting to students who are encountering that for the first time. The day after the election, we had students come in here who were in tears. I remember waking up and feeling like my country didn't support me anymore. You know, my country voted against me, voted against my lifestyle, voted against my community, and that was the thing that I couldn't understand, is that you're voting against so many people's lives and so many ways that people live. And so it really kind of, to me, felt like I no longer belonged. And I feel like for a lot of people, that's still how they feel. The day of the Orlando shooting, we were devastated um, and we participated in a community vigil. I went to the vigil, Bloomington itself held a vigil and that was an incredibly huge event. But it was really in the little things. Um, you know, people, you know, asking if you were okay. Um, and people, get, getting texts from my friends here, from people who knew me here, um, people wearing pride shirts or ribbons, things like that. It was really the little things, I think, that, you know, made you feel supported, even if you didn't know the people that were offering support. But that was, a, it was a really, really scary time um, for a lot of people, and, and including myself. 17 years ago, there was a shooting on this campus that took the life of a Korean student by a neo-Nazi. It made national news. Um, this man also shot and killed a black coach at Northwestern in uh, suburban Chicago and shot and wounded several Jewish people in Chicago. It was a two-state two shooting spree. And, and the, the man who did the shooting was a former um, IU student, neo-Nazi. Um, did not represent the university, obviously, but a very troubled man who ended up taking his own life. It all happened on the 4th of July. It was a horrible, horrible holiday, and it really impacted the community. But the silver lining was the way it brought together people from the Asian community. It was a Korean student who was shot and killed 
uh, that day, the Asian, the gay, um, the black, the Jewish community. And I think over the intervening years, there have been um, some real efforts to keep the lines open and to support each other because of, of that hate crime. Massacres and shootings happen all the time uh, in our country, all over the world, but I think it's a completely different thing when those are your own people, you know, and to really, for the first time, realize people, some people would kill me for who I am. And it really makes you understand what does it mean to be brave and what does it mean to be proud? Because for some, that means putting their lives on the line, whether it's here, you know, with one person, or if it's in Chechnya, where people are being round up for who they are. And it doesn't take a lot when you simply affirm people for who they are. I think I was interviewed at some point and I said, my experience as a pastor and as a parent have helped me to be a good person in this position. So I said, all you really need to do is love the students who come in. Thank you.